Hi, my name is Ernie, and this video is part one of a four-part series that I created where we will go on a step-by-step -step journey together, proving that the Catholic Church is Jesus's one true church. My hope is that this series will help you grow in knowledge and confidence in the Catholic Church. So in this first video, we will look at the Word of God and see what the Bible tells us about Jesus's church. So let's begin. So who is Jesus' church and what does the Bible say? Well, first of all, the Bible says that the church is authoritative. And where I saw that is in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 18. We see here that the church is the final arbiter of truth, not an individual or not even two or three people, but the church. There is some sort of central authority that can make decisions to bind and loose, basically saying what is true and what is false, even to the point of who belongs to the church. Because it says here, if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as a Gentile and tax collector, basically treat him as a non-Christian. That's not authority. I don't know what is. And then the church said um, uh, they, they followed Jesus's commands, where in Acts 15, there was this group, um, uh, Jewish converts, that were debating Paul and Barnabas about Gentile converts and whether or not they should get circumcised. And what was interesting to me is that Paul obeyed Jesus in the sense that Paul didn't uh, or, or realized that he didn't have the ability to make decisions on his own because the church hadn't already decided on this issue. So he and Barnabas went up to Jerusalem now, they were um, arguing with the Jewish converts in the church of Antioch. And here, after they had gone up to Jerusalem and the, there was a debate that occurred, the church then made a decision. And the church made a decision, not just of themselves, but of the Holy Spirit as well. And so Jesus gave his church authority via the Holy Spirit to make decisions for the whole church because this central church in Jerusalem made decisions for the church at Antioch. So in my mind, the church then is therefore authoritative. What more does the Bible say? I saw that the Bible says the church has to be infallible as well. It cannot make error. And where I saw this is in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. And I didn't focus on Peter and the rock and keys like, uh, like I usually do. But I really looked at a couple of other things. Jesus said he would build his church. That means Jesus' church is visible. Believers are going to know where it is and where to go. And Jesus' church won't be defeated by Satan. And if you look at the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When I think of the gates of hell, I think of Satan. Well, who is Satan? The father of lies. That means the church is not going to ever teach error. Never going to lead someone through Error in teaching leading someone to hell. Decisions of the church, because they're going to bind and loose, they are going to tell the community what is true and what is false. Those decisions will be protected from the father of lies. It means they can't tell any falsehood. This made sense to me because later in 1 Timothy 3.15, the church is called the pillar and foundation of truth. And I thought to myself, if the church wasn't infallible, how could people depend on the church to know truth from lies? Because for the first thousand years, really, really for the first years up until the printing press, not many people at all had the Bible because the Bible had to be manually copied. It was time consuming to do, very expensive. And for the most part, people were um, uh, not able to read. And so they depended on the church. And if the church then could teach falsehood, how could it possibly be? the pillar and foundation of truth. It didn't make any sense to me at all. So therefore, we know that Jesus's church, based on the Bible, is both authoritative and infallible. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about, okay, now that we know that Jesus's church is authoritative and infallible, who is that church today? Can we identify that church? So thank you for listening to this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.